Hey guys, CJ here, and this seemingly innocuous looking 240 millimeter AIO offers a very unique feature, leading to some surprising performance at a really competitive price. I'm going to tell you about it. Let's do this. Welcome to Elevated Systems. Again, I'm your host CJ and over the past several months I've tested and reviewed about a half a dozen all-in-one liquid coolers and my general consensus has been all 240 millimeter AIOs that use the Asetek design basically perform the same. There are very few things that can be done from an engineering standpoint to increase the cooling ability. They all have about the same size cooling plate to transfer the heat from the CPU to the liquid. The radiators are all about the same density and for the most part, it comes down to which one has the better fans capable of maintaining higher static pressure to provide that forced convection to remove the heat from the system. They may be able to tweak the efficiency in the cold plate, microfin design, or get a little extra fin density into the rad, but that typically only gets the AIO an extra degree. Then steps in AGO and the AT240 with a unique, if not completely original idea. Let's open up this AIO and find out what Ego did to try to improve the cooling efficiency. First thing first, of course, what comes in the box? First are a set of Ego 120 millimeter fans. These are fluid dynamic bearing fans and operate at 200 to 2200 RPM, producing a maximum airflow of 61.5 cubic feet per minute and 2.8 millimeters H2O of static pressure. The translucent fans are illuminated by eight hub mounted addressable RGB diodes. And I have to say, these are some of probably the most solid and well-constructed fans I've seen in this price range. The AIO is compatible with all these socket types and the mounting hardware is packaged in individually labeled bags, which is crucial for this AIO as all the mounting screws look the same but they're not. The 240 millimeter radiator has an actual fin thickness of about 20 millimeters and a fin density of 20 fins per inch. The radiator is connected to the water block by 400 millimeters of braided nylon sleeve tubing and the cold plate provides a slightly larger cooling surface area for an AIO in this class. And finally, what makes this unique? This is not a pump block. This AIO has an inline pump away from the water block up here near the radiator. Now, some AIOs like the EK Predator have the pump in the radiator, but the only other one I know of with an inline pump is the Be Quiet Pure Loop. But why would this matter? What's the benefit? Well, the pump itself does generate some heat and it's actually cooled by the same liquid in the loop that cools the CPU. So theoretically moving that heat source away from your cold plate will allow for more efficient cooling. It also allows for more room in the water block for larger surface area for microfins and even a more efficient flow pattern. But does it really provide better cooling? Well. Let's get it installed and find out. Installation is pretty straightforward and simple. The provided instructions are mostly pictograms and easy enough to follow. Simply clip the appropriate mounting brackets onto the water block and screw the block to the motherboard using either the provided Intel backplate or the stock AMD backplate. Now, a couple of notes on installation. First, the AMD mounting bracket is larger than is necessary with an extra hole out on the sides which actually interfered with the M.2 heat shield on my motherboard. I asked Ego directly why this is, and they explained that the AT240 uses the same mounting hardware as the AT360, which supports Threadripper socket. So the extra hole is for that. Additionally, if you align the block properly so that the text is facing correctly, the tubes can actually touch the memory module in the innermost dim slot. I don't see this as an impediment to installation as the Trident Z memory I'm using is as wide as RAM can be without impeding itself in the given dim slot spacing. But again, you really don't want your possibly hot memory touching the cooling tubes on your AIO. Connecting the pump and fans is also fairly simple. The four pin PWM fan connectors can be plugged into the provided fan splitter and connected to the motherboard CPU fan header. While the three pin pump cable can be plugged into the AIO or pump header if your motherboard has one. If not, 
any fan header will do. Just set the speed on that header to 100%. Finally, the RGB cables can either all be daisy chained together and plugged into an addressable three pin motherboard connector or all plugged into the provided SATA powered controller. The controller allows for various ARGB color and pattern selection and the water block includes the Ego logo and has an infinity type RGB effect. All right, time to see how effective the inline pump design is. The test bench is a Ryzen 7 3700X on the ASUS Prime X470 Pro, and all the BIOS settings are at default stock fan curves with the 3600 megahertz memory DOCP profile enabled. Now, to the charts. First up is Prime 95, and with all the charts, and it's important to note that the difference between each of these AIOs is minimal. It's like the Olympics, with the AIOs just edging one another out by mere tenths of degrees. But in this race, the Ego AT240 takes the gold, while the much more expensive Inwin and Lian Li coolers come in a close second and third for their silver and bronze. Next is a handbrake 11 minute transcode and here the Ego AT240 outperforms the lower budget Vitro and Cooler Master coolers while being edged out by the more expensive coolers. In a 10 minute Cinebench R20 run, the Ego AIO comes in right about in the middle of the pack at 38.5 degrees Celsius above ambient. In a 20 minute ADA64 system stability test, the Ego again performs better than most of the competitors. Now, with all the stock fans at maximum RPM, we only see a 0.6 degree margin across the board, with the Ego again coming in just behind the more expensive models. But when we look at a fan normalized test using a Noctua NFP12 set to 1700 RPM, the Ego AT240 takes a pretty decisive victory, keeping the CPU almost a full degree cooler than the next coolest AIO. And finally, when we look at the averages, the Ego with its inline pump and larger cold plate comes in second behind the twin turbine Inwin SR24, which basically uses a pair of 2500 RPM fans to brute force its way to victory while sounding like a tornado. But considering those results, I think this slide is the most impactful. The Ego AT240 is the cheapest AIO tested and had the second best cooling performance. And while the Inwin cooler did outperform it by a mere 2.6%, it did it at a cost increase of 91%. However, it's also important to note that the Inwin SR24 is a twin pump design, so there is redundancy should one of the pumps fail. However, it's also extremely loud. And speaking of sound, the Ego is by far the quietest AIO I've tested to date, producing only 33.6 decibels of noise at idle and 47.6 decibels at full load. So there you have it. The Ego AT240 is the best price to performance AIO I've tested to date. Now it's not perfect. Ego should definitely consider including non-Threadripper compatible brackets with the AIO for better compatibility with AM4 motherboards. Of course, there's also the DIY method. Now, I'd normally be all done testing the AIO. However, Ego did send over some of their new AR12 Pro fans. So I screwed on these fans and ran the Cinebench test again, and it actually came in about 0.6 degrees higher than the stock fans. However, the Pro fans max speed is 600 RPM slower than the stock fans while still having about the same static pressure. So 0.6 degrees higher, but even quieter. I only have my ear to judge that because my 3D printer was going, so I couldn't break out the sound lever meter, but it was definitely noticeably quieter. And these Pro fans with the infinity mirror RGB effect in the hub, look pretty cool and despite your feelings on RGB and whether the infinity mirror is gimmicky or not, what I really liked was zero hub wobble that you typically see when it's just a sticker stuck in the center of the fan. And I think these fans are only like 10 bucks each. They also come in three and five packs so you could buy the AIO with two pro fans and still be under 90 bucks. Anyway, that was just extracurricular. As far as the Ego AT240 as shipped, I mean, it has exactly the same radiator as the $120 Lian Lee Galahad, as far as I could tell. It has the same inline pump as the $95 Be Quiet Pure Loop. It outperformed and is quieter than every other AIO I have, and it's the cheapest. 
So I think the conclusion is pretty clear. If you're looking for a quiet and affordable 240 millimeter AIO with some RGB, this is a good choice. Now that does come with the caveat that I only had this AIO on my test bench for two days. So I have no input on long-term reliability. In theory, this pump should be more resilient because it should operate cooler as it's farther away from the heat source. But again, this is just a theoretical assessment. Hey guys, future CJ just jumping in here during the edit process. And there's something that I overlooked during the review that as I was editing occurred to me with the inline pump and the pump not being in the water block here, this can alleviate the situation where you may have to mount a radiator at the bottom of the case because now your pump would no longer be the uppermost part of the loop. With it being down here, it would continually push water through the water block and air wouldn't be able to accumulate in the water block or in the pump because the pump is actually down so low towards the bottom of the loop. So that's another thing to consider with this one. But if you're interested in the Ego AT240 or the AR12 Pro fans or any of the AIOs I tested, there are links in the description below. Coincidentally, the like and subscribe icons are down there too, hint, hint. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.